So our objective is we want to find a gel that can deliver antibiotics or induce stem, stem cell differentiation for dental pulp uh, regeneration um, and be durable enough to do so. So the three variables we wanted to look at in order to determine a good gel were um, first the structural material, so either F127 and F or F88, the cross-linking linking agent, um, uh, one of two photo initiators, and then the concentration of that photo initiator, a high or low concentration. So first of all, let's go over some of the materials we're using and why we are using them. Um, first, we have chloronic F127 and F88, and this is the main material for bioprinting. So this is like the supporting material, the structure of what the hydrogel is made of. Um, F127 has a higher molecular weight and is stronger than F88. Um, F88, on the other hand, is more viscous, which may make it harder to bioprint, although today we were able to bioprint it, so I'm excited for those results. Um, but it's also more hydrophilic. So for our photo initiators, we're using our photo initiators to cross-link or essentially hold the material together. And that's induced by UV light. So the UV light um, polymerizes the photopolymer that's in this um, photo initiator in order to form a polymer network. So we use Ergocure, Ergocure um, 651 and uh, 2559, uh, sorry, 2595. Um, and A and B respectively. So B is known to be more cytocompatible with living cells, and this is under a low UV intensity and for a short amount of time, which is what we are doing. Um, and then because these photo initiators are in general not very biocompatible, we wanted to test a high and low concentration to see if the gels would still cross-link and to see if, this, if the cells would survive. So for our experiment, here's our procedure. Um, first, we made the solutions of F127 and F88 in a phosphate bumper solution, and both had concentrations of 20%. And a day later, we added two different photo initiators at two different concentrations, 2.4% uh, and 0.24%. And that's why you see um, eight final samples. So again, we're testing these three different variables, either F127 or F88 the um, photo initiator A or photo initiator B, and then a high or low concentration. So that's why we make these samples. So then one mil of each sample was put into a silicon um, mold that's 20 millimeters wide, and we did three reps for each sample. Um, those, that's like 24 gels in total. We put them under a UV light to initiate the cross-linking, which is why we had that photo initiator in the first place. We had one minute on each side, which basically meant um, one minute of under the UV light for one side, and then we basically flip it like a burger, and then it was one minute on the other side. Then the gels were stored in DI water in centrifuge tubes and incubated for a day or wait. And that's like our data collection process. Um, gels were weighed on day zero, so the day of making them, the day after, and then three days after. Then before day zero measurements, we conducted rheology on the gels to understand how stiff or strong they were. And then after three days, um, the gels were, were um, had an ethanol bath and then were dried in order, and weighed again in order to see um, like what's their final weight. So why were those measurements done? Well, to measure three different things. Um, first, the swelling ratio, which is basically um, how uh, what's like the water retention of that material. Then the elastic modulus from the rheology in order to measure the stiffness of the material. And then the cross-linking um, efficiency, which is to measure how efficient the gel is cross -linked. So the data collection showed us some pretty interesting things. Um, for the swelling ratio, which is essentially water retention, some of the main takeaways were F88 swelled a lot more than F127, and there wasn't much of a difference between the two photo initiators. Um, between the high and low concentrations of the photo initiator also did not have much of a significant difference. And this significance was based off of two-tailed ANOVA tests. Then for the elastic modulus, which is essentially how stiff the material is, um, the main idea is where F127 is much stronger as expected based off of its um, chemical properties. Then there was a significant difference between how stiff the F88 was between what photo initiator was used, which is interesting. Um, but again, the concentration didn't seem to have much of a difference. So not much of a difference between high and low concentration. So in conclusion, we know that F120 is, F127 is much more stiff based off of the elastic modulus data. 
We can also tell it's more affected at cross-linking because of the lower swelling ratio, which means essentially there were less pores in F127 for water to like seep into, meaning the material had probably cross-linked better. But we'll need a further test the photo initiators and the concentrations um, for cell viability in order to truly determine which is better. So these conclusions were just made up, made up based off of the data we've collected so far, and we want to collect a lot more. For example, how bioprintable the materials are, which we started testing today. Um, how many cells die or grow on the material, so cytotoxicity or cell viability. And then osteogenic uh, differentiation, basically if the stem cells will induce form, bone formation. We will also be testing the ability of the material to self-degrade after its use is up without the need for extraction. Our end goal is basically to have pretty healthy teeth. Um, so after conducting all our testing, and we, we decide on what a final strong flow toxic gel would be. This gel can have a bunch of applications. Um, for example, for the root canal, it, the gel can be placed in the pulp chamber, um, chamber in order to induce dentin regeneration or to disinfect that nerve area. Also, the gel can be placed in the periodontal defect in order to support, um, in order to deliver stem cells or protect that area. And with that, thank you, thank you to these people, my my um, grad student from the dental school, Brennan for helping us with bioprinting, all our professors for just being awesome, and um, everyone else. And there are some references, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.